These are really easy. Right, see? I need to do my own. Well, you just did your own. So light it, but it's like an Lit, Hayden. Oh. Did you pull the curtain? Baruch Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I don't hate him. I'll call him. I share a shadow of the top of the Zivan, the high lake near a shell. Hanukkah. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us by thy commandments, who commanded us to kindle the lights of Hanukkah. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Chiyas anisim lavotenu bayamin hazman hazeh Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who performed wondrous deeds for our ancestors in ages past at this time. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Chehekianu vehekimanu vehekianu lazman hazeh Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, Allowed us to participate in these moments of joy. <laughs> Stop the <laughs> thing. Sound awful. Who is? What is it? He um, performed. Uh, what is it? Who brought us to this season again? And yeah, right, right, right. Let us enjoy another Hanukkah together. Oh, me. Oh, me. Oh, for the first night. <laughs> for the first night, the first light tells of God, whose first command was, "Let there be light." The darkness of idol worship was scattered when Israel brought radiant knowledge of our of our <clears throat> of one God. I am the first and I am the last, said the Lord. Amen. Oh, excuse me. Amen. But here's this uh, kind of now we're crooked over. Over. That's how it Oh, you missed that photo moment. Nicely, <laughs> dear. Game is a red Oh, yeah, here they are, Lord. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Probably have three. Where are they? Mine are dead. Now, I, like I think this is. What is it? That's a nice thing. Cool. And I think this is your husband's. I got four trees. Dinosaur. Dinosaur. How many trees did you get, Josiah? Two. I've never heard of that. Here, Philip, will you hold my time? What time? Ah! It's gorgeous. Well, let me ask. Um, a water pitcher. It's gorgeous. Smile, Mom. Hold. It's for you and Grandma. Put it down so I can see your face. That's pretty. Isn't that pretty? pretty? Yes. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. No, please. I got my eyes are closing here like Dad's. I know. <laughs> I've trained you. It's taken 20-some years. Oh, well, he's starting to look like you. <laughs> or you look like him. We all look like Uncle Bob. Right. <laughs> That's a nice one. It didn't come out so clear. <laughs> Why doesn't it come out clear? With I don't oh. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. A coogie. Oh. You know, I don't Wait, know. Wait, I'm not. I can't do both I of these. Right? Oh, geez, it's been recording all this time. <laughs>、Yeah,、anything, well, how far down West 57th were you? By the Everybody by the wave、way. at Josiah. He's filming you. By where? By Josiah. By the river. The west side by the river? Yeah. Josiah, maybe you'll be a film artist. Hi, sweetie. Is that safe? I'm zooming in right now. It's well, kind of fun. I got news for you. That's what they put us. I'm zooming in on Jordan. All right, Josiah. Just turn off the camera the now. Ow. <laughs> Please don't throw things. Yeah, you're going to break some. Please don't. That's funny. REA. Putting a movie now? Here we go. <laughs> Josiah. I have a matches. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who sanctified us by thy commandments, and kindled the lights of Hanukkah. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, who sanctified us by thy commandments, and kindled the lights of Hanukkah. Is the light. To mom from Hayden. Ooh, thank you. Yeah. He's the Anne Claire of University Boulevard. I love my Hayden. You're looking. No, I can't see through the viewfinder. <laughs> Jordan, what is? Jordan, can you get it? Can I open it? Yeah, I don't get one. I'm doing a pillow for the bathtub. Ooh! I'm so excited. Thank you. All right, open your gifts, everybody. Welcome. Not the best. 
Here, let me open you. Happy let me open you. I got love. Wait, let me get some opening. I got stars on my ceiling, and they glow in the dark, and I got these little sprinkles Here, we have a whole... Cool. I love it. What'd you get? I don't know. Oh. I love it. What'd you get? You. Oh, that's what we needed. Thank you, thank you. How much was it? I love it. What'd you get? That's so you can carry your keys when you're running. Oh, cool. Oh, that's great. You know what? It's really a big deal. Let's look at the picture from the person who gave it to us. <laughs> when I'm not in town, too. Ooh, then I hope I know what this is. Is this supposed to be really dark? Yay! Yay! Now I won't get run over. Ready? Yes. Baruch Hashem, Adonai, Elohim, Melchola, Asher Kedushan, Vitzasav, Vitzivanu, Lahadlik, Ner, Shel, Hanukkah. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the Universe, who sanctified us by thy commandments, and commanded us to kindle the lights of Hanukkah. Did you take a spill? Not yet. Dad, I think this one's gonna fall. It's fine. It falls. Just hang on. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. The battery it only works so fast here. Okay, that's enough filming. The battery's definitely about gone. That's the one that mom has! Oh good, it is a different sweater. Hey, hold totally it up. different sweater. Now I got wait, wait, got it. Okay, one more time. It's not working. I, can't. I know, use the other camera. I want to use this one. Hey, hey, hold it up. Hunter, hold yours up. Oh, what? Oh yeah, the portal is. The battery is dead, Dory. It's not gonna work. Thank you. You said that I was sad you're telling me that I was poor. I don't know. All right, I'll get the other side. Okay. What's the date today? I have absolutely no idea. The 29th. Uncle Steve's 50th birthday. How do I know that? Because I'm going to go to school. Hayden, what are you doing tonight? I'm staying home and fetching all my. What? Doing Fetching. all your Egyptian stuff. Yeah. Baruch HaTah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kedoshanu Vizvatah Vizivanu, Bahadlik Ner Shel Hanu. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, who sanctified us by thy commandments, commanded us to kindle the lights of Hanukkah. How many were nights? The seventh night. I said the past like three nights. Hi, Jordan. Hi, Mother. Can you just Mother. wave at me? Hi, Hunter. We know we love I don't know. Hi, Hayden. Hi. Hmm, maybe I'm going to or something. CDN. No! Oh, I almost caught my hand on her. That was bad. This is a little bit of your hair. This is not good. I would have gone like this and got it all over your hair. Okay, I would have gone like this. That's all over your hair. Josiah. Jordan, do you want to read it? You no, it's fine. Oh, you have a right. You're taking stills? I'll read. Do you want to read? Dory? No. Watch you don't illuminate it. The seventh night. The seventh light is the light, is the calm light of patience. Nothing can be achieved in haste. The spreading tree in the soul of man, the woman grows slowly to perfection. Thus saying King David. Trust the Lord, wait patiently for God. Well done. Bravo. Praise thy saving power. Thou amidst the raging foe. Was our sheltering power. Furiously they assailed us. But availed us. And thy word. Broke their sword when our own strength failed us. And thy work 
Jordan's not to me. When our own strength failed us. This is not right. Hey, tell everyone what you got. I got a sweetie. Yeah, we'll and what did you give this time? I gave him this little one of those games like I got? Okay. Yeah. Well. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I got three pairs of socks. <laughs> Ooh, Hunter always feeling underwear. <laughs> sure. Thank you. What did you get, Thank Hunter? You. <laughs> Wait, hey, no, 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 what does it say? An underwear, like you already said. <laughs> Thank you, Josiah. What and what did Jordan get? I got a pair of boxers and a book. What kind of book? Beer? <laughs> you don't drink beer. No. You're underage. I know. Oh. Okay. Ta-da! What did you get? Ooh, yay. You know, speak... Seems to be the classic gift. The family that loves each other loves their underwear. All right. <laughs> Good gift. Everybody can always use new underwear. Yes, they can, as long as you mark who it belongs to. Mom zero. <laughs> I'm back. Hinge just seems go along with it. Hinge are not as big a problem as the other three. That's Thank you. You're what welcome. Is that? I, I felt left out with the other <laughs> one without him, so. <laughs> For the eighth night, the eighth light is the light of courage. Let truth and justice be your armor and fear not. Judah Maccabee, the hero of Hanukkah, lived by the words Moses spoke to Joshua. Be strong and a good core courage. Smile, Hunter. <laughs> Open it, Hayden. Smile, Hayden. Smile, Josiah and Lainey. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gordy Barbara. Happy birthday to you. You can blow your candle on that. Yay! How old are you? Dory cut the cake. Can Dory cut the cake? Once please. Leave him alone. Thank you. Are you happy? <laughs> oh, you wouldn't know. Down, exercise. Plenty of exercise. Climbing the walls. Happy birthday, Mom. Love, Jordan. I get you. I got you a birthday card that'll remind you of me. Oh, I saw that. It doesn't do what it's supposed to either. Happy. <laughs> Love, Hunter. Thank you. That's funny. Come with love from your son. <laughs> Mom, I don't say much about it till a special day. I know, but Mom, you mean much more to me the older that I grow. And more and more I realize that the good things you have done to make me feel so proud of you, so glad to be your son. Happy birthday. He wrote that all Yeah, I was going to he write that all. <laughs> He's inherited my poetic genius. I know that we fight a lot, but I love and respect you. I'm glad, something I'm glad that. did. What is that? You, I agree. Respect you a great deal, and I love you. I can see, I, I love you. I love you. Now, that's not love, where's love? That, where are you? Why don't you show Josiah? I hope that you, you know read it that. Alone. I hope. I hope. I don't have I my glasses on. Why don't you read it? I hope you know that. Happy birthday. And I hope you well, know that. Happy period. birthday. Happy birthday. No, it's, 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 Doing what? With my tuition. Once again, rewind. <laughs>
to the picture frame. No. From Jordan. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Ooh. And a gift certificate. Ooh. Best wishes on your birthday. Wishing you a world of happiness on your birthday and always love mom. Jewish card. Ooh. Celebrate Ellie, Barry, Ari, Neely, and Phoebe. What's with this Phoebe? <laughs> Hi, Hayden. What kind of dog is Phoebe? Hayden? Yeah. Hi, sweetheart. Is your mom? No, keep going. Okay, keep on going. Hayden, you're off there. No. Hello. Oh, that's so oh, look cute. at how cute. cute. It's an earthquake. What is it? It's a, it's a pig snow cone. Snow cone. Snow. Wait. Oh, okay. She saw it and she thought of you. Yeah. It's adorable. It's cool. All right, push stop now. Pictures so if you have to. Uh... <laughs> Hi, Hayden. Hi. Oh, let's do it, Hayden. <laughs> On your and birthday. Today. Have a happy birthday. Love, Steve and Linda. May your every wish come true. Earthquake. Hey, Hayden! It'll be a wonderful Stop day. It. Lo Linda, Loveland, and Steve. There are all kinds of presents on it. Cool. Are you ready? <laughs> Let me see. Ooh, that present. Coming. Hi, Hayden. What's your name, Fisher? I need a picture. Did someone just take a picture? I'm you taking know, up your nose. I know. Why don't you stand up? Another thing they're down to the top of her head. No, it's better from the top of her head. Ooh. Oh, it's so cute. It's adorable. Is that a makeup thing? Yeah, like a cosmetic thing. Very yeah. nice. That's adorable. It's a bag. Cosmetic thing. choices were last year, but it seems like there, were a lot, there was a lot more variety to really be sure. That's all. Uh, Peter Thomas and Matt Clark. So. Would you like, I mean, you know, he looked really like some wilderness, like out there.
happened in a small country just a few years ago. Monaco, once ruled by greed and power, with the right connections and positioning, gave a vital force that connected it and its powerful ruling through wealthy family to the world. A shining monarchy, a bountiful economy, a landscape it used to die for, and yes, a very famous princess, has made this country on the coast of southern France a much talked about, watched, and recorded land and has put it in the spotlight for centuries past and present. The country is bordered on three sides by France and a coastal view with the Mediterranean Sea on the other. The Monegasques, as the residents of Monaco are called, strongly believe in Roman Catholicism, and the religion plays a large part in the monarchy. If you think about it, Monaco is smaller than the suburb of Beach, only seven square miles. Within that area is a flourishing land. However, in the past, Monaco has gone through many changes. In 21 BC, Monaco is principally used as a Julius Caesar anchored his fleets there during his conquest of the <coughs> land of Pompeii. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the so-called Rock of Monaco was ruled by an ancient Germanic people of the Lombards, called Portus Monicus or Portus Monarchy, because in earlier times it was said to have been a temple dedicated to Hercules and was served by a single prince named Father Monicus. The sailors who took shelter there were called it the Rock. On the eve of January 8th, 1297, Francois Grimaldi took power over the Monaco Fortress. A member of a powerful family exiled from Genova, Italy, he came to the gates of the structure dressed like a monk and begged for admittance. An armed man was hired and entered with him, conquering the city. Since then, Monaco has belonged to the Grimaldi family, with, few, with very few brief exceptions. By the late 13th century, Raider Grimaldi, who was feared by both his enemies and family, had brought the Grimaldi name into prominence. In 1338, Rainier's son, Charles Grimaldi, through purchase from Genova, became the sole lord of Monaco, which consisted at that time of a fortress and narrow rows of houses that were home to 200 or so Monegasques. When Charles was off fighting in the 100-year war, Monaco became a refuge to the bankrupt criminal and to pirates. It wasn't until a decade later, when Charles returned, that this was ended. At this time, Charles also purchased the small farms and villages adjacent to Monaco, spanning the township soon grew around the fortress, and in 30 years, Charles had become the richest of the lords while in Riviera. In 1355, the Genovese people became worried about Monaco's alliance with France and attacked Monaco. Charles had no choice but to surrender, as he had no real army. His fortunes lost, he died shortly after the last battle. Almost a century later, in 1419, Rainier II's three sons purchased Monaco in the name of the Grimaldi family. When Jean Grimaldi, when 1454 wrote, his will attest to the succession approach of the Grimaldis. The eldest son would inherit the title. If there was no male heir, the eldest daughter was, would succeed under the condition that her husband assumed the names and arms of the Grimaldi. In 1487, Lambert Grimaldi amended the laws of succession to exclude those who had entered the church. Over the next two centuries, four leaders of Monaco violently died. This was during the time when Italian princes murdered each other, and there was constant violence. In 1505, John II was murdered and succeeded by his brother Lucien, and then Lucien and his brother Augustine were assassinated by their nephew Francois. After reigning for 15 years, Lucien's grandson Hercule was stabbed to death by a group of Monegas. Hercule left a seven-year-old old son as his heir. Fearing that he and his sister would be killed as well, the children were hidden in the vaults beneath the castle until their uncle, the Prince de Valdetier, would come and officially give him the oath of loyalty. He then moved to Milan to learn from his uncle. In 1612, the Prince of Valdetier was determined to see his nephew become Prince of Monaco, making Monaco a principality. On March 4, 1793, the Grimaldis were overthrown by the French, and their standards were taken down from the palace, which led to monstrous pillaging of the art, silver, and other treasures inside. It seemed highly unlikely that the Grimaldis would ever rule again. <coughs> Joseph Grimaldi later petitioned to have the Grimaldi family regain power over the principality of Monaco. After Louis XXVIII ascended to the throne in 1814, he agreed, saying that the borders of France would go back the way they were in 1792. In 1863, Blanc, along with James de Rothschild, managed to acquire enough money for Charles and Princess Caroline of Monaco to build a casino, roads, hotels, and villas under their control. Dirt was brought in to cover the rocks, while trees, shrubs, and exotic flowers transformed the rock into a beautiful countryside. One kept that Monegas were not allowed into the casino. Blanc then chartered 50 stagecoaches in the flotilla of steamboats to bring gamblers from neighboring Nice and Cannes to Monaco. Former fields were rapidly taking the look of a town, with the new marvelous hotel and bathing stone. It needed a name, so they decided on Monte Carlo, which was Italian for Mount Charles. 
Monte Carlo is quickly becoming a chic resort as well as a place to gamble. The rich and titled men from England, Russia, and the continent came with both their wives and their mistresses. Monaco would quickly become the scandal star of the Riviera. Maria Henri Maxime Bachard Romaldi, the first Romaldi heir since Honors IV in 1758, be born in Monaco. After his birth, Monaco, as we know it, was about to be established. On May 9, 1949, Rainer succeeded his grandfather. Antoinette, his older sister, made several plans to kick Rainer off the throne, which would put her six year old son next in line. But her plans were found out, and Rainer allowed it to let go. By the time he was 32, Rainer was advised to marry. It was important for the continuity of the principality. The qualification where they had to be rich and Catholic. One name on the list was Grace Kelly, a famous Academy Award winning movie star, Julia Roberts every day. On May 5th, 1953, while en route to the Cannes Festival, Grace Kelly agreed to meet the prince in his private suit. Six months later, after being granted permission from the French Council General, Rainer proposed to Grace and she accepted. On April 14th, in the pouring rain, Grace, her poodle, and 65 friends and family boarded the ocean liner U.S. Constitution in New York, headed to Monaco on the way to the wedding of the century. A private plane showered the harbor in red and white carnations as Grace and Rainer met, made their first appearance in the press at the ship dock. Quote, a prince and a movie star. It's pure fantasy. Quote. As Grace met Rainer's family, there was tension in the air. Antoinette told a friend with great hope, quote, the marriage won't last two years. From all the marriages seldom do. On April 18th, 1956, Grace and Rainer were married in a civil ceremony. Many celebrations were held, and Grace was given the Order of St. Charles, a magnificent sash awarded in gold and a crescent mother of pearl, which usually wasn't given to a princess in Monaco until long after her wedding. The next day, the wedding of the decade took place. Grace wore a classic silk gown and a high neck and villain box, along with her 12 pair of blue white diamond gauge rings. Rainer wore a uniform and represented Monaco's history. French, Italian, and principality officers' uniforms of the 18th and 19th centuries were combined and adorned with metal. The service was conducted by three ministers. The press photographed the wedding, and Grace, still under contract with MGM, allowed them the rights to make a film and make a movie out of the wedding. The wedding was watched by 30 million, a huge audience in its day. <coughs> Soon, Caroline Louise Marguerite Grimaldi was born to the new ones. Only 14 months later, Albert Alexander Louis Pierre Grimaldi was born his sister as the heir to the throne, the future prince to Monaco. Their third child, Stephanie Marie Elizabeth, was born several years later. Grace gave up her movie for her shortly after she married, so she had much more free time. Randy remained for the head of Monaco's Red Cross. She held balls and donated her profits from their wedding to this organization. She raised her volunteers to visit the elderly or disabled through the Red Cross, founded a home for retired people called Cap Three, and children's center for working mothers. She was founder and honorary president of the World Association of Friends of Children. She founded the Princess Grace Foundation to the causes outside of the AMDE or Red Cross. She became a spokesperson for teaching new parents about nursing babies. On the morning of September 13, 1982, Princess Grace suffered a stroke while driving Stephanie to the doctors. Her car flew over the edge of a cliff and plummeted over 120 feet downward and landed in a farm below. Neither Stephanie nor Grace were wearing seatbelts. Grace flew in the back with Stephanie under the floor. Stephanie was badly hurt as well, but Grace was killed. Much like recent headlines, the most famous and loved princess of her day was killed in a car accident. Her death shocked the world. She had been so popular and had used that popularity to promote the tourist growth of Monaco. With her support and glamour, Monaco had become world renowned for its elegance and gambling, and also for some serious business activity. She used her elegant image and films to bring stability to her adopted country and move it to a higher level of recognition. Her funeral was a huge event. Coincidentally, it was attended by Princess Diana as the first royal movie. As Monaco has grown over the past few centuries, we've seen it flourish and expand. At the turn of the century, Monte Carlo's gambling casino brought in about 75% of Monaco's revenue. Today, a mere 4%. Monaco's rank in the world community rose as they were admitted to the United Nations in 1993. Earlier this year, on January 8, 1997, the Grimaldi family celebrated its 700th anniversary. Although Monaco has had a history of murder, intrigue, and mystery, today it has become a stable and growing principality, a strong Romaldi family continuing to rule Monaco. It's ready to begin the 21st century. Thank you.
grade history programs that we're going to invite you to this year. Um, we, I see some very familiar faces in the crowd this morning. Some of the people here today are on their third mummy wrap. Um, <laughs> one could have been at her, their fourth mummy wrap, but their oldest, when their oldest child was in fourth grade, uh, this was just a little 4G program in our own classroom. I might explain uh, quickly the, the history of this thing. I think this is year number 16, if, I, if I'm counting correctly. I've kind of lost track. But this started out as just a little thing in my own classroom years ago. And uh, it's gradually built up to what you're about to see today. Um, in the spring, you'll be invited to the medieval wedding and street fair which is held over in the chapel and in the Brown Gym. That started out as just a classroom activity for Mrs. Rasper, who was Mrs. Siska's predecessor. And that grew into the big production that it is today. So in the winter time, or well, as if this isn't, but uh, in a couple months, just before spring break, late winter, you'll be invited to uh, some Aesop fable skits when we're doing Greece and Rome. And that one is uh, kind of something that's always been the whole fourth grade. So today, for this one, you'll see the members of 4G are kind of the characters up here, the rappers, the dead bodies, and the narrators. And the members of 4S and 4P, you're going to see 4S um, students lined up along this side of the chair rail facing in, and 4P will be over here facing in. <coughs> and then in the, so uh, 4G kind of has the, the front parts here. In the spring for the medieval wedding, it reverses. And since Mrs. Rasper started that, Mrs. Siska's two classes have the main parts for that wedding and everything. And, and my class kind of takes the, the, um, the backup roles. So it all evens out in the wash at the end, as they say. And in the middle for Aesop Fables, everybody's equal. Uh, I want to thank all of you for coming, first of all. And also, as you have seen your own child's costume develop, and by the way, I hope nobody sprung it on you last night. Oh, by the way, Mom, I need something for Egypt in the morning. We've been telling them about this for weeks. So uh, if, if there was anyone that did that, let me know, and we'll wrap them up and keep them that way for a while. But uh, I want to thank you all for your part in this, putting the costumes together. I know it uh, sometimes is a, is a hectic thing. But uh, as you're going to see, it, uh, it, I think the costumes today rival some of the actual Egyptian outfits um, you'll see as you see the kids come in. So uh, without further, <coughs> further ado, we're going to turn things over <coughs> to Kelly Jackson, who's our first narrator, and he'll get things started. Enjoy. Good morning, and welcome to Ancient Egypt. Today you are privileged to watch the funeral procession of two recently deceased members of the Egyptian royal family. This is a very solemn occasion, so we ask that you behave accordingly. We also ask that you use your imagination.
ancient Egyptians had one great wish. That wish was to live forever. Egyptians believed that after they died, a new life began. They would live in their tombs as they lived on earth. They would also travel to another world to live with gods and goddesses of the day. Egyptians believed that everyone had a ba or soul and a ka, an invisible twin of the person. They believed when a person died, his ba and ka were released from his body and lived on in the tomb. The ba could keep contact with the hidden family and friends of the dead. The ka traveled back and forth from the body to the other world. In order for a person to live forever, the ba and ka had to be able to recognize the body or they could not return to it. And that is why the body had to be preserved or mummified. A mummy is a corpse that has been dried out so it will not decay. The earliest Egyptians were mummified naturally. The corpse was buried in the ground in the hot dry sand of Egypt. The hot dry sand of Egypt dried out the body. The preserved body turned as hard as stone into a fossil. As time went on, burials became more elaborate. The dead were wrapped in a shroud of cloth or skin. They were buried in pits lined with wood or stone or in caves. Bodies not buried directly in the sand became exposed to dampness, air, and bacteria. They decayed. So people learned how to embalm or mummify their dead. It took centuries of practice to perfect the art. Embalmers became so expert that the mummies they made remained preserved for thousands of years. Mummification was a long, complicated, and expensive process. People were mummified and buried according to what they could afford. Poor had modest burials. Noblemen and others who served the king and his queen had elaborate burials. Pharaohs, the king of Egypt, were the richest of all. It was believed, too, that a pharaoh became a god when he died. So pharaohs were mummified the best and buried in splendor. It took 70 days for embalmers to prepare a body for a royal or noble burial. Embalmers worked in workshops near the tomb where the mummy would be buried. Embalmers first took out the inner organs. They removed the brain through the nostrils with metal hooks. They made a slit in the left side of the body and took out the liver, lungs, stomach, and intestines. Each of these organs was embalmed in a chemical natron and put in its own container called the canopic jaw. The heart was left in its place. Small bundles of natron wrapped in linen were stuffed inside the body. The outside was covered with natron too. The chemical dried out the body the same way the sand had done. After 40 days, the natron packs were removed. The dry, shrunken body was sponged clean and brushed with oils, ointments, spices, and resin. The head and body were stuffed with new packing soaked in the same substances. The eye sockets were plugged with linen and clothes. The nostrils were stuffed with beeswax. The arms were crossed and the mummy's fingernails and toenails were covered with caps of gold. The embalming cup was sewn together. The mummy was adorned with jewels of gold and precious stones. Then the body was carefully bound with long, narrow strips of linen. Fingers, toes, arms, and legs were wrapped individually. Linen shrouds were placed between the layers of binding, and every few layers were glued together with resin. After 20 layers of shrouds and binding, the mummy body took on its normal size. It was possible during the long process that a piece of the corpse, an ear or a toe, would fall off. This and all leftover material used for the embalming were saved in jars to be buried near the tomb. Magical amulets were tucked in between the mummy's wrappings. The mummy shaped the small mummy shaped figures called schwabits were farm tools. The schwabits would work in the fields of the other worlds for the mummy. The bound head was covered with a portrait mask. If anything happened to the mummy, the ba and the ka would still be able to recognize it. The max, too, was bound. Then the whole package was wrapped in a shroud and given a last coat of resin. The mummy was finished. 
Meanwhile, skilled artists, sculptors, and carpenters prepared for the burial. They made the coffin or a nest of coffins for the mummy. The coffins were painted inside and out with gods, goddesses, and magic spells of protection. They made jewelry for the mummy and furniture that would be buried in the tomb. They carved statues of the dead person to be placed in the tomb. These would serve as resting places for the ba and the ka should anything happen to the mummy. A splendid stone sarcophagus was made to hold the coffin. The walls of the royal tombs were carved and painted that with scenes that would magically come alive. The scenes showed the person's new life in the other world. Dancers and musicians entertained him. Servants worked in the fields and carried food for him to eat. The gods and goddesses of the dead welcomed him. A long, solemn funeral procession took the mummy to the tomb. The mummy rested on an elaborate sled pulled by oxen. Another sled carried the canopic jars in a chest. Priests, family, servants, and mourners who were paid to weep followed. Porters carried the many possessions that would be buried with the mummy. A tomb was no longer just a pit. It was a house for the mummy, the ba and the ka that was made to last forever. A royal tomb was also a fortress against robbers who tried to steal mummies and their treasures. Tombs were more important than houses to Egyptians. People had them built during their lifetimes. For centuries, the dead were usually buried in tombs called masabas. Masabas were made of brick and stone. Royal masabas had many storage chambers and were beautifully carved and decorated. As years went by, pharaohs took more and more with them into the tomb. Tombs became bigger, stronger, and more <laughs> elaborate. For a long time, pharaohs had pyramids built for themselves. Pyramids were huge stone monuments that took hundreds of workers their lifetime to build. The pyramid covered the pharaoh's burial chamber. <laughs> Near it were temples, <coughs> storage chambers, and masabas, <coughs> where the royal family and servants would be buried. Later, pharaohs were buried in secret underground tombs in a deserted place that is known as the Valley of the Kings. Tunnels, passages, chambers, and the tomb itself were cut deep in rock, hidden from sight. They were magnificently carved and painted. When the funeral procession came to rest at the tomb, priests performed a final ritual on the mummy called the opening of the mouth. The mummy's mouth was not actually opened, but magically given the ability to speak and eat again. Then the mummy was put into the sarcophagus, which was covered with a heavy stone lid. The canopic chest with the jars, guarded by their own gods, stood nearby. The mortars left and the entrance to the tomb was sealed up with a wall of stone slabs. At last, the mummy was in its internal resting place and on the way to its new life. It is said that the first Egyptian to be mummified was Osiris, a legendary king. He was involved by Anubis, the jackal god. When Osiris died, he became a god. He was king of the underworld and prince of the dead. It was to Osiris' kingdom the dead wished to go. It was played at your funeral so that you will remember this grand celebration. I am, a, I am a traveler from Greece. I am sorry that I came at such a terrible time. My gift is the Greek alphabet. Now I hope the, the dead pharaoh will watch over Greece as well as Egypt.
household kept the fourth and Queen Manelia. We would build pyramids out of limestone. We would build pyramids on the west side of the Nile. I think it is an honor to build pyramids for our pharaoh. I bring you this limestone brick from the Great Pyramid to remind you of the work we did for you. Help the queen by giving her this box so she will have a place to put her things in the afterlife. I am Anubis. I will weigh your heart against my magic feather. If your heart is lighter than my magic feather, you may enter Osiris' kingdom. But if your heart is heavier than my magic feather, you and your soul will be fed to the god. <laughs> <laughs> my ticket today. I am the gobbler, the swallower of the dead. Because of me, all Egyptians try to do very good deeds. I have been notified that your soul is lighter than a feather. Darn it! Maybe if you eat this turkey, your soul will become lighter than Anubis' feather. It will both get a meal. just witnessed a small piece of history. We hope you appreciated the rare opportunity you just had. We, the fourth graders, appreciated presenting it for you. Thank you for coming.